Well, uh, the markets off the high point of the day at the moment in the red and looking a slightly weakish as well as sluggish at lunch hour. So Nifty 50 at 10,800 levels at this point. Mid caps are also underperforming. It's the reliance as well as the ITC, which is giving some support to the key indices. Market breadth is also looking weakish, Sonia. Oh, yes. In fact, you know, Reliance has been the leader of this market, right? And th so that's the one stock that continues to uh, make its presence felt. If you just pull up the contribution plate, you'll notice that 10 points coming in from Reliance Industries, about 10 points coming in from ITC, and about 5 points coming in from TCS. So these are the three heavyweights that are aiding the market. Uh, in the broader markets, though, there's a deeper gash that you're seeing. So maybe some profit taking down about four tenths of a percent. And in terms of individual stocks, uh, this market is just in a mood to punish weak earnings. So, you know, Thirumala is down about 20-odd percent. Ashok Leyland has been under so much pressure ever since the December, uh, you know, sales numbers came through with a fall of almost about 20-odd uh, percent in sales. Ashok Leyland now to a new 52-week low, down about 3.5-odd percent. Madhusan Sumi as well from the broader markets not looking very good. But let's talk about some top stocks in focus. It was an all-round beat for Bharti Infratel in Q3. Despite that, the stock is one of the top nifty losers us today. Reema joins in to tell us why. Reema. We were expecting revenues to come down by 3.5%, but they only fell by 1%. Margins came in at 41.5% versus estimates of 39%. The expectation was that this would be a weak quarter on account of the two-month impact of the tenancy exits by Vodafone and Idea. But that hasn't played out, and surprisingly, the company's numbers are fairly resilient. What Kotak says is that we are unable to find a bottom-up explanation for much lower than expected sequential decline in the services revenue, which is why that conference call at 2.30 p.m., will be very critical. Now, some concerns going ahead that, yes, Q3 was a good quarter and a resilient quarter for Infratel, but going ahead, Vodafone Idea have already announced that they want to cut down their tenancies further by about 22,000, where they have some overlapping uh, coverage. Now, that will not happen in one go. That will happen in the next four or six quarters, which means that earnings will continue to remain under pressure. And also bear in mind, in the numbers which went by, Geo has announced that they will put up their tower assets along with fiber assets up for monetization, which means means that the overall supply of tower assets in the market goes up and you know investors will have more to choose on and choose from which could put and you know which could have an impact on the valuations of Infratel as well so these are not factors which are new um, you know because of which the stock may have corrected but these are largely some more concerns ongoing for Bharti Infratel all right. Thanks so much, Reema, for getting us all those details. Overall, telecom sector, after a bout of major consolidation it saw, the struggle really continues at this point. Let's shift focus on Interglobe Aviation, and that stock is rising today over 6% as we speak, and that is reacting to operationally better performance in Q3. And Sonia will tell us more about it. Sonia, you were expecting a turnaround quarter for Interglobe Aviation. Crude has a lot to do with it, but what's the overall analysis? Well, yes, you know, just before before that, I want to mention one word on PVR because the stock is taking a bit of a knock right now. That's because despite a 50% rise that you're seeing in the revenues, the EBITDA is below street estimates and lower than, uh, you know, the ex expectations. So 17.1% EBITDA margins is what the company has seen versus a poll of 19% or so. So that is the reason why PVR is under pressure right now. Um, you know, the numbers, are year on your numbers, of course, are not comparable because of the SPI acquisition. However, uh, uh, the EBITDA margins as per the poll is uh, below what the street was expecting. Footfalls continue to be very strong on the back of which the revenue growth uh, is quite good. But <clears throat> coming back to Interglobe that you were talking about, uh, Nisha, the numbers are lower than street estimates but it is an operational turnaround that you're seeing compared to the disastrous quarter that they had in Q2. So, you know, if you look at the revenue growth has been about 28 odd percent the EBITDA growth, uh, EBITDA, is, uh, EBITDA is down, but there's a growth on a sequential basis. Uh, even the net profits have come in at 191 crores versus 762 crores on a year-on-year -year basis. So year-on-year -year numbers are down because fuel costs have risen quite a bit. In fact, fuel costs are up 70% on a year-on-year -year basis. But sequentially, if you look at, you know, some of the graphs will come up for you. The EBITDA margins have recovered from, uh, you know, about 3% last quarter to 21% in this quarter. Uh, 
the core EBITDA number also has gone from 220 crores last quarter all the way to 1681 crores this quarter, the best that we've seen in the last many quarters. So there's definitely a turnaround that is uh, playing through for Interglobe Aviation. One, because crude prices have fallen. Two, yields have inched up higher. Uh, the entire industry has undertaken a price hike of around 14 to 30 percent. That's aiding and demand has been very good. So yes, uh, there are ingredients in place for a recovery in Interglobe Aviation's numbers and that's what the street is factoring in. All right. Thanks, Sonia, for that analysis. Interglobe Aviation looking good today. Another stock which is on our focus and is reacting to a good set of Q3 numbers is Ujivan. And that is also up more than 6% in trades as we speak. And the company's Q3 performance was the best in the last 10 quarters. Earlier today, we spoke uh, with Ithira Devesa, who is the MD as well as the CEO of Ujivan Financial Services. And he says that they will look to list the bank by q 2 FY20. The first requirement from the RBI is that we list in the next 12 months because that is uh, we are just completing two years now and within the next year when we complete three years we have to be as a bank listed as well as the holding company. So that is an issue which we have uh, worked with. We will be approaching the Reserve Bank and discussing you know the ways in which we are going to be able to list and we have to bring in to the focus also other regulators like SEBI. So once we have uh, their blessings, we will announce what we're going to do on the listing. Also in the next uh, three years, that is uh, three years from today, we have to bring down the promoter holding to 40%. Okay, that's the word coming in from Ujivan. The stock is up almost 7% right now.